Our Donner Pass Thunder DVD video brings you all the vintage views of the history and challenges of this line back in the days of the Southern Pacific. This presentation will give you the detailed story of fighting the heavy snows of the Sierra Range with active rotaries, spreaders, and flangers, and passive means called snowsheds used years ago. Let's peek into a few of the scenes of this hour and 30 minute video. One of our cameramen was almost completely covered by a snowblower working on the other side of the embankment while filming the approaching spreader. It almost looks like a storm whipping up for a moment. The GP38-2s here are 1980 built units with no turbocharger and rated at 2,000 horsepower each. They're well suited for low speed heavy load operations and SP has about 70 of them for branch line and local service. Of these, four were equipped for snow duty and had the addition of rooftop antlers for knocking down icicles at tunnel openings, rotary windshield wiping viewing ports, and even a heating system for the horns. These Jeeps are potentially out there in weather that other units wouldn't experience. The heavy snows up here are also the reason California became a huge productive agricultural region. We address this in the history that we untangle. Here are a few of the topics. The Golden Gate is an opening into a vast inland waterway that connected to the rich lowland delta area stretching between Stockton and Sacramento. This lowland area not only receives drainage from the ranges lying north, principally by the Sacramento River, but also from the San Joaquin River, which flows northward. The lengthy western slope of the Sierra Nevada mountain range also drains into this lowland area. Many weather systems that pass over San Francisco and Sacramento are compelled to dump their contents in the form of snowpack that also supplies water to the lowlands. The importance of this huge drainage system opening to the Pacific Ocean with its wealth of calm porting locations and compelling agricultural opportunities cannot be overstated. The average of 450 inches of snowfall is the most for any U.S. line, and the wet, heavy snow has been nicknamed Sierra Cement by those responsible for keeping the line open. These vintage views show the F7 locomotives nicknamed covered wagons that were once the mainstay diesel on Donner Pass. This train has a classic set of four black widows on the point with three more helpers on the rear. That's fresh paint on the red and gray repaint F7. Eventually, all the F units would look like this one. The 1959 action here is in Truckee, and the flangers have been at work to keep the line clear. Here, a flanger returns from track clearing powered by an SD9 built in 1954, still wearing the original Black Widow colors. The crew has a fire going in the flanger's stove. It was 10 degrees that day. Not much has changed since 1959. The snow is still something to respect and prepare for. The first rotary snowplow was developed in Canada in 1884, and the Central Pacific quickly adopted them for their own purposes. These rotaries were once steam-powered, but in the 1970s they were repowered by using retired F7 booster units as electric generators. They're the only remaining examples of a vast fleet of SPF units, such as the ones we saw a few moments ago. There are many years when the rotaries aren't needed, but they're fired up when conditions appear threatening. This modern unit is positioned in Truckee, California, assigned to keep the eastern slope open. They didn't need it for this storm, which is fortunate since they discovered a cracked weld up front. Part of this extensive coverage was on a ride on the City of San Francisco passenger train over Donner Pass in a raging snowstorm. Let's look into some of these scenes from the full video.
look down and you'll see the communication and signal lines that require endless maintenance even in all that snow the weight of this heavy icy snow causes line breaks and circuit leakage and poles slumped over from the snowbank movement and it all has to be dealt with even in weather like this the track and signal maintenance people on this line are some of the hardiest workers you'll find anywhere If you're wondering who shot this vintage film, it was Bob Morris, the well-known photographer. Theodore Judah underestimated the impact of snow, and after his death, it was up to Chief Engineer Montague to build more than 30 miles of these wooden snow sheds in the 1870s to make the line serviceable in the winter. By the time 1971 rolled around, most of these sheds had been removed or lost to fires. The modern rotary plows and flangers are able to keep the line open, although it has been with superhuman effort at times. My guess is that the engineer was carefully chosen this day because they knew it would be a tough one. This is when even experienced engineers start to entertain thoughts about events such as train number 101 that was trapped in the snows with 80 mile an hour winds and avalanches of 1952 for a number of days. It took the combined effort of the U.S. Army and seasoned SP snow fighters to rescue the passengers that week. We're pulling into Truckee now, and if you'll notice a group of trainmen standing at attention on the rear platform of this shiny SD-9, which was one of only two SD-9s equipped with steam boilers for passenger car duty. The SP private car, Sunset, was about to be cut off the rear of this train. Inside the Sunset was the president of the Southern Pacific, who was about to begin his vacation up here. As we pull out of Truckee, we see various methods used to keep the switches from freezing in place and wave to some half-frozen track workers. Accelerating out, we run by some parked SD-40 diesels with a flanger and several bay window cabooses. It was caused by a track worker at Norden who accidentally caught his long underwear on fire, trying to thaw out and dry them. The result was the complete destruction of many buildings, houses, and about a mile of track. Fires were usually a summertime problem, but the hoses were all frozen that day, adding to the trouble. Immigrant Gap shows the expansive shed that covered crossovers sidings, and even an 80-foot turntable large enough to turn big cab forward helper steam locomotives. This facility was like a small town with housing for track and signal workers, a telegraph office, hotel, schoolhouse, restaurant, and stores, all built solely to support the nature of the steam engine. This video presentation also includes many scenes of SP freight traffic in wonderful blue sky weather from Sacramento and working up into the Donner Pass from a rail fanning perspective to bring the countless vanished visions of the SP era.
Look for this DVD at your favorite hobby dealer.